Kagurabachi is in quite a peculiar spot at the moment. It is still coming off of its meme status, but it is slowly in the midst of cultivating a cult following, myself included. There's a lot of good stuff on the table here, man, and we are only 16 chapters in. We have a very clear direction of where the story is headed and where our characters goals and objectives lie. Chihiro himself is a sympathetic anti-hero as he has zero qualms about taking an enemy's life and his blood boiling hatred for those who took his father away from him grows more and more every day. Honestly it is a bit refreshing having a hero that doesn't have a mental crisis when it comes to striking down his foes. Yes you and I both know that yo know, killing is bad but there are some people that don't deserve to breathe on this planet and they would commit the same evil acts over and over again if they could. I mean some of the people Chihiro encounters have no issues with mutilating a little girl, so uh, yeah, they, they need to be turned into uh, fresh sashimi ASAP. Chihiro himself is an incredibly strong swordsman, as he wields Enten, one of the seven sorcery-infused katanas forged by his father, Kunishige. Enten, interestingly enough, seems to have its power based on three goldfish that Kunishige bought for Chihiro when Chihiro was a kid. And to be honest, I love the design and implementation of goldfish here, man. Whenever we think of strong abilities, we think of animals such as a bear, a dragon, or a lion, or something cliche in that vein, but a goldfish, you see, that's interesting, right? Something so tiny and insignificant at a first glance, I would actually be more scared of seeing this than something else. Chihiro's father stated that the red goldfish attracts good fortune, the black goldfish wards off evil, and the three colored goldfish is supposed to bring something amazing. Real quick pause on this video. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a question for you. Are you looking for something fashionable and affordable to wear anime related these days? Are you looking for an anime inspired t-shirt, a hoodie, a hat, or even like lights or anything of that nature? Well, boy, I tell you, head on over to AnimeExpressStore.com and oh yeah, they'll hook you up over there. I actually just copped one of these Megami t-shirts. This thing's actually fire. I'm actually so excited to get it. And ladies and gentlemen, I have a special announcement for y'all. Go ahead at your next check out hit code daffy10 for 10 percent off your next purchase man oh yeah we sponsored now so i can curse in this bitch yeah remember daffy10 d-a-f-f-y one zero for one zero percent off of your next purchase man as shihiro trained diligently with enten he was able to harness its power to a considerable degree but has not totally mastered it yet kuro the black goldfish releases a gets a tension a slashing attack that extends a slash of spear energy towards his opponent and this isn't something with sheer cuss of force and knocks his opponents down but rather this slash was able to completely bisect 10 grown men at one time Akka, the red goldfish circles chihiro and blocks any incoming attacks and whatever touches Akka will be absorbed and be sent back towards the user's opponent chihiro described it as the power of red isn't just for defense it absorbs and seizes ownership now i would assume that this would be extremely taxing on chihiro's spear energy as this move is pretty op so i'm assuming it costs like 60 mana or something I, I have no idea now shihiro in chapter 9 was able to redirect and take sojo's may lightning by emitting electricity from his katana as well now sojo believes that shihiro's blade has lightning but what i believe happened is that shihiro used red to absorb the attack and not send it back but you know for fear of hitting the surrounding bystanders and he had to have his body take some of the blow what this tells me is that Akka has a cap or a limit on things that it can take and rebound so very interesting for this ability. The three colored goldfish becomes a cloak for Chihiro, as evident by his trench coat gaining the appearance of a goldfish's caudal fin or its tail fin. Nishiki, the tricolored goldfish, causes Chihiro's now accelerated motion to shriek and leave a trail of energy similar to smoke. Nishiki allows Chihiro's physical attacks, such as punches, kicks, and sword strikes, to be coated with spirit energy. Chihiro in chapter six was able to take down a swarm of clones almost instantly. And Nishiki also appears to silence Chihiro's footsteps as well and grant him substantially higher stealth capabilities for things such as infiltration and stalking. Honestly, if I were to have a sound effect for this, if it were to get an anime adaptation, it'd have to be something like fabric flying in the wind. Like, you know when you take out a pair 
of jeans and you like fan it really hard like like that sound Chihiro has an incredible amount at his disposal and he is relatively in his infancy as a sorcerer at age 18 he's able to fend off and dispatch large groups of gangsters with relative ease he is able to redirect a sorcerer's bomb explosion point blank back at his user and has tanked a lightning attack that was meant to massacre a crowd of people overall Chihiro is incredibly strong but unfortunately, his abilities may not be enough for him to overcome his strongest opponent so far, Genichi Sojo. Sojo is a weapons dealer and the leader of a sorcerer group that is pursuing Char for the properties of her body's composition, which allows her to have healing properties so amazing that she can regrow missing limbs. Sojo, to be frank, don't play that bullshit. He has killed multiple of his subordinates for defying him and has shown zero remorse for any action that he commits. Strangely enough, Sojo seems to have some sort of backstory that implies that he is maybe a victim himself. I typically don't like villains having tragic backstories, but after being caught by a sorcerer who can stun his opponents with their own trauma, we get this panel of what appears to be a young Sojo in a field of flowers surrounded by dead bodies. Now, what does this mean that maybe Sojo killed these people on purpose? Probably not, considering that this is his trauma revolving around this image, so I mean, it's, it's possible. Perhaps he regretted having to kill these people, or maybe they tried to harm him in some way, and that is what awoke his homicidal tendencies. We, we, we won't know until we actually get an explanation for this. Sojo wields Cloud Gouger, another one of the seven sorcery infused swords created by Chihiro's father. Sojo is an avid admirer of Kunishige's work as he even goes as far as to say that he loves him. He tries to read everything he possibly can on Kunishige and is even angered that Chihiro has Enten considering the fact that he knew all there was to know about his work. Sojo is actually disgusted by what literature recalling Chihiro's father's work states and he claims that there is no other reason to create magnificent weapons such as these but for absolute slaughter and destruction. Sojo being a direct foil to Chihiro not only physically but mentally, Chihiro adopts his father's mentality rather than this bastardized version of what Sojo is selling and what Chihiro believes is that you are to defeat evil and protect the weak always. That is why you wield the sword. To defend, not to harm. Cloud Gouger at this point has Mei, a lightning attack that has a slight charge with a cooldown of 10 to 20 seconds depending on how long it's charged for. Yui is an ice based property being able to summon columns and structures of ice. Honestly, pretty basic, we've all seen ice based things in anime and manga before. Ko, the third ability, can generate massive amounts of water which can be evaporated for a smokescreen effect or be used to go in conjunction with Mei to electrocute opponents in a larger area. So we have our two combatants here, and the first fight didn't go very well in Chihiro's favor. Sojo is much more experienced than Chihiro and it is painfully obvious, as even though he is still learning about Cloud Gouger, he was able to track and nearly decapitate Chihiro's fastest attack at the same time while he was cloaked in Nishiki. Now granted, Chihiro was injured, but Sojo's speed was still borderline inhuman considering that at this point, Cloud Gouger didn't give him any speed amplification. Now their fight was cut short prematurely as Chihiro attempted to rescue Char from a speeding car in the midst of their battle, and honestly, if this fight had continued, Chihiro would have died. Taking the Mei head on was already bad for him, but that Mei ended up shredding muscles in his dominant hand so he wasn't able to operate at 100%. Sojo was stronger and while yes he was slower than Chihiro, he was able to accurately predict his movements. So if you were at this point like, man Daffy, what would be so important here, you had to make a video about it, it seems pretty basic to me so far, me not finish! Let me explain. Chihiro goes on a rescue mission to save Char and Sojo ends up getting jumped by five elite members of the Kamunabi essentially the nation's special forces for sorcerers. Yeah, that doesn't tell you how strong this man is. They thought they had to 5v1 this man in order to get the victory off. Yo, Sojo, Sojo, real bad, man. <laughs> and I'm not gonna lie, Sojo was giving him the business and, and they started getting some licks in there, you know, a little bit, a little bit. Chihiro quite literally had to give them a play-by-play -play on what they should do whenever they fought him. Do you realize how scary a motherfucker is for y'all to need a heads up before you fight him with four other people next to you? But as Chihiro infiltrates an enemy fortress, we get a bit of information that is extremely interesting. Chihiro's father explains that the Enchanted Blade have a true realm beyond the theoretical. Its source material, the Tensky, is a natural material. Theoretically, its limitations can completely transform based on its wielder. That bit of information is absolutely crazy. The fact that the sword's abilities can evolve or change from wielder to wielder is actually kind of wild. And we get to see two applications of it 
in real time. Chihiro gets pressed by several different high level sorcerers and unfortunately ends up getting put into a corner and he has to retreat for in fear of getting killed as his dominant hand is still injured. As Chihiro thinks on the situation, he recalls a time when his father was chastising him about how stale Chihiro's mental framework was. Chihiro at the time was more concerned about trying to live up to his father's expectations and drawing within the lines. Chihiro took after his mother's personality, which is being more concerned with logic rather than feeling, and Chihiro's father wants Chihiro to live as Chihiro, not as Kunishige's son. With this revelation, akin to Tanjiro remembering the Hinokami dance that his father used to perform, Chihiro comes back to the battle with a cold conviction back into his eyes. Chihiro promises to put an end to it all, and we see multiple Kuros surrounding his enemies. As this nameless sorcerer attempts to finish Chihiro, he puts his guard up, only to be instantly cleaved in half through the iron gauntlets he was wielding. Chihiro is now on the offensive, and it is revealed that Chihiro instinctually hit the sorcerer not with one single slash, but it was essentially 20 smaller slashes stacked on top of each other with Kuro in one strike. Chihiro then swiftly and nimbly assassinates all those he encounters in this fortress with Nishiki, almost as if you were an apparition. <laughs> Yo, these fodder ass mooks activated this like demon cloak foolishness, and then my go Chihiro comes in and boom! Just just cleaves this nigga's heads clean off, yo! I love how even like the fodder characters in this series have interesting designs. Cause initially, like upon first read, I thought these guys were gonna be like at least somewhat of a challenge for a chapter or two, but nah, <laughs> nah. Chiro has successfully leveled up his understanding of Enten, and at full strength, I'm very curious to see what he will be capable of. Meanwhile, we see that the Kabunabi are still attempting to take out Sojo with some degree of difficulty and success. This guy with the bird mask even gets a pretty good hit off and they have Cloud Gouger in their possession when Sojo utters the word May and we see that one of the two sorcerer's bodies were one straight through. One sorcerer loses his arm and then we see that the bird mask guy loses half his body in an instant and we can see that Sojo himself moved at the same speed as May's lightning but without holding the sword which we've never seen before. As an audience, we would think that you would need the sword itself to channel the properties of the blade, but Sojo explained that the more he used Cloud Gouger, he felt himself getting in tune with the blade more and more. Sojo used Mei to attract himself to the blade, essentially making the sword the lightning rod and himself the lightning. Sojo has leveled up as well. Both of these individuals changed their very understanding of sorcery on an instinctual level on the cusp of death. Chihiro initially lacked the raw strength and power but had the speed to back it up, while Sojo now has pure speed to go hand in hand with the staggering amount of strength at his disposal. While yes, I do think that these two are great foils to each other, I don't know if Chihiro is ready for this yet. This guy, Sojo, is a behemoth in terms of power and speed, man. I don't really know how he's going to be able to keep up. While yes, Chihiro Nishiki is fast, is it as fast as lightning? I don't necessarily know. I, I suppose we'll see in chapter 17, but man. Man, and so many questions are brought up with this evolution of their blades. Are there more blades like this that, what is the varying degree to which the other blades change on their users? Because while yes, Sojo's evolution was more direct upon himself, Chihiro's was more of an understanding and, and more technical in how he used his blade's ability. So I'm very curious to see what the limits of these blades are, right? Because now, yes, I, I'm glad that we're not going to get any, you know, straight like, you know, beam struggles or anything like that. I'm glad we're not going to see that. Um, I actually want, you know, good, decent sword choreography, which we've been getting. We've been getting fantastic sword choreography from this series for a minute now. I'm very curious to see what these other blades can do, right? I'm assuming there's going to be a fire blade. There's going to be an earth blade. I mean, we already have water and, and ice and cloud gouger. And, and Chihiro is kind of like shadow, I, I, I guess, is uh, the closest I would probably equate it to if it was like an element or something like that uh but how far does this evolution go and what other properties can you apply towards yourself we know that nishiki uh makes this armor around shihiro we know that nishiki creates this shroud and, and it alters the appearance of of shihiro's cloak but i'm curious how far does evolution go with your blade because if sojo can utter the word may not touch his sword and go straight to it what else else can you do with your own body with these swords? I'm very curious, man. Now, here's the thing. I 
highly doubt that Sojo is going to die in this next chapter or even the next couple chapters. I think that he needs to be a villain for a decent amount of time. He needs to be the, the, the main villain of this arc for a considerable amount of time, considering that how much that he has packed within him. And I certainly don't think he's going to die yet. We still have his flashback and we still need to have Chihiro kind of get some closure with his father's death and everything. But I he needs to go <laughs> he needs to go yo this man sojo is accelerating almost as fast as chihiro if not faster in terms of depth and knowledge of this blade i don't really think that you can allow this guy to live bro because if five members of this elite strike force are dead like that and a 5v1 yeah you this guy there's no way you can let this guy live absolutely not but yeah man let me know what you guys think how do you guys feel about the evolution of chihiro and sojo's abilities man well i'm, I'm very curious to see what we'll see i'm I, and, and i want to see them both at full strength and what other abilities they can pull out, man. I'm, I'm very curious. I, I like the imagination that the author is using here. So, yeah, just let me know down in the comments what you guys think, man. It's Baby Boy Daffy, guys. Just thank you so much for joining me on this video. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. And make sure you take care of yourselves. Have a good one. Peace.